Hello everyone. In this 11th lesson of how to make your first game in Unity, we are going to take a look at creating a countdown timer. In other words, a time limit. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, let's get on with the show. So, a countdown timer is going to give us a bit of a challenge to this game now. So it's all good and well having a game where we can wander around, be able to pick up some coins, but there's no point to it yet. A timer then gives us a limit, something to try and achieve before something else occurs. So, let's start by creating some simple UI for our timer. Let's go to our canvas and let's go to our text. Remember, this text was for our score and we can use the similar mechanic that we created here to create that timer. So I want our time to be over on this side of the screen. Let's take all three of those, hold control, press D to duplicate, and let's bring it over here. Now, we've created a separate version of that score. <clears throat> and essentially, all we need to do is just change this to say time, and then we'll have 30. So much in the same way as us updating our score every time we collect uh, one of the coins, what we're going to do here is have a script that updates this time figure constantly. So every second it will reduce. So in order to achieve that, we're going to need to create another script. So let's have right click, create C sharp script. We'll call this global time. And let's open that up. In Visual Studio. So as I said, the way this is going to work is every second we will have a variable which will start at 30 and then after a second it will reduce it to 29, then after another second reduce it to 28. And we will do this until that time reaches zero. Then obviously we have other things to do once it reaches zero because it'll just end up counting down constantly. So we need to kind of work to avoid any negative time. So once this is loaded, uh, we are going to start by creating a coroutine as well as a couple of variables. So it's just loading up now. Sometimes Visual Studio can take a little bit longer than it should to open up. And there we go. So for some reason, it has decided it wants to open up player controls, even though we don't need player controls, we need global time. So just make sure you do have global time open. So as I say, we're going to start by creating that coroutine. So let's have I enumerator. And we'll call this deduct second. Open close bracket, parentheses, and open the curly bracket. So because we're doing this in a second, we now need to wait for one whole second before we execute any code, i.e. take off one from our second count. So yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets one close bracket semicolon. So what I'm going to explain here is let's go through some of the scripts we've already written so far. So global coins, coin collect, camera follow, player controls, and if we scroll down player controls, and then coin rotation. So for those of you who are indeed brand new to Unity, I've done something now which may have confused you, and this is obviously quite intentional. I have done this down here and I mentioned that as a coroutine. Now, so far we haven't even dealt with coroutines and you may be wondering, well, why can we not put yield return new, wait for seconds in void start or void update? So the reason being is a coroutine and a method are two different things. Obviously these are methods and this is now a coroutine. A coroutine allows us to control time in its simplest form. And because we are creating a script which has to control time one way or another, we have to use this. 
Now, I hope you're not too confused. And like I said, the intention there was to kind of make you jump straight into the deep end of a coding without explaining anything and then seeing how you feel about that. Obviously, coding is very difficult. So if you've got to this point in the video and you're still feeling comfortable, then don't worry, you're not going to have any more problems learning how the coroutine is working. So all we're going to do here to kind of take a step back is the coroutine is going to deduct a second from our variable every single second. But we cannot just invoke a coroutine when the script loads. We have to tell the script it's got to do that coroutine. So that effectively means that in void start, when the script starts, we have to start the coroutine. So let's do that. Start coroutine and in parentheses, the name of that coroutine we've just created. So in this case, deduct second, open close bracket, close bracket and semicolon. So what's happened here is as soon as the script starts, obviously this start method runs and then it will immediately start this coroutine. And this coroutine is something that we can constantly kind of use if you understand what I mean. It's something that we can invoke instantly, obviously when we've started it up here. So it will instantly wait for a second before we do anything else. So because we're going to be dealing with UI again, we need to add in the namespace at the top using unity engine.ui and obviously we're going to need some of those variables. So let's add a couple in. We may need to add in a couple more depending on how we uh, work with all of this. But essentially the two we're going to need first and foremost is the UI text on our screen as well as a count for the seconds. So public game object time if I can type properly display and public int again short for integer and seconds semicolon so what we've done here is say that uh, we have two variables one of them is the UI the other is the seconds itself so that now means that after a second we are going to reduce seconds by one. So we type seconds minus equals one, semicolon. But that does also mean that we need to set a standard default for our seconds. And like I say, I think 30 is a good, uh, a good number for us to work with. Obviously, if you want to make yours more challenging, you would change it here. You can also change it in the scene itself because it is a public variable. Uh, but for now, that's uh, completely fine. So the clever thing what we're going to do is we can either use a loop if we want to, or we can do this via update using a bool. I always say that there are many, many ways to achieve the desired effect in Unity, um, and it's up to you whichever way you want to do it. You could use a loop, you could use it using a bool. Um, I'm going to use a bool in this tutorial because I'm also going to use that to my advantage for when we get game over later on in this series. So let's add a bool in there. So public bool. Um, let's have this as deducting time. Obviously, by default, that will be false. So we don't need to place false here. So we now need to make sure that through all of this, we make sure that everything here functions as normal. And I guess the way we have this set up as starting coroutine is as soon as the script starts may not necessarily work in our favor because we're using a bool. If we're using a loop, then probably it would work. However, we're going to do some clever modification so we don't need to have start coroutine inside the start method. In fact, we won't even need that start method at all. So let's carry on with our coroutine and we're going to say time display dot get component and in spiky brackets text so much in the same way as we did with the score parentheses open close dot text equals and now we need our text to say score and then colon space and then the quote again and then plus whatever our time is so in this case we just put seconds 
with a semicolon. So essentially what's happening here is when our score, or rather when our game starts, our score will be 30 because that's what we've put as default. Our coroutine will start and after a second it will reduce one from that seconds and then update that UI right here. So after that what we'll do is we will say deducting time equals false. And you're thinking, well, we've already set it as false. Why is this the case here? Well, like I say, we're going to use a clever little bit of coding so we're able to update this constantly. So we're able to, not rather than have a loop inside the coroutine, we're going to be able to invoke that coroutine so we're able to stop it whenever we actually need to, i.e. when we hit zero. So this is a good chance for us to really go into if statements again. So we're saying if, and in brackets, deducting time equals false, then open curly bracket, and we'll say deducting time equals true, because we are now deducting time. And then at the same time, we can copy this line of code here that says start coroutine, deduct second, and place it below. We can now get rid of that start method completely. Save the script. So just to kind of go through what's happening here, because I, I feel sometimes with a coroutine it can be a bit confusing. So we are starting, void update is always running. So we are starting the update. We're checking if deducting time is false, which it will be when it first runs, at which point it then sets it true. That means that this if statement can no longer run, but we have started this coroutine. That coroutine starts by waiting a second. It then reduces a second and then updates the display. And then deducting time turns to false, which means we end up back here. So we're looping this constantly. Now, at the moment, this will go to negative one. However, we will be able to sort that in the next tutorial when we end up with game over. So let's have this all set up now so as our time actually runs correctly on screen. So let's head back into Unity. Give it a moment just to update. Now, I am going to rename this game object that we had previously. This game object is going to be our global object because we already have the global coins on there. So, so I'm just going to have that as globals. And obviously I'm going to keep the game audio on there because that is also uh, a global object as such. So we now need to drag and drop global time over here. So it's now right there. You can see there's our second set, our deducting time bool is ready. So our time display is going to be this, but I think this is probably also a good time to rename these texts here. So time display, we'll have that as coin display. We should probably have this as coin border, and we'll have this as coin back. And then probably do the same for that. Time, border, and time back. So now everything is named as it should be. So let's head back to that globals object and we just need to drag and drop the time display onto there. I'm going to save my scene, press play, and we should see our time countdown. Just realized I have made a silly, silly mistake. I don't know why I put score there. I hope, I'm hoping some of you guys commented as soon as I did that. I really hope you did. Please, <laughs> I really hope you did. So anyway, it says time rather than score. There we go. And I think I'm gonna bring these over just a little more to there. And do you know what, now I think about it, I think I'm also going to change the size of these as well. So I'm going to take the rec tool and just reduce them to about there. And let's press play. There we go. Awesome. So we're counting down now. So let's see what happens when we get to zero. Let's collect these coins here while we can. So you can see that the score is still updating independently. 
the time is updating as standard. So obviously it will hit zero now and it will carry on. So either way, we now have our time mechanic in place. What I would recommend you do before the next tutorial is probably tidy up your UI a little bit, get it looking how you want it to look. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to create a game over and respawn of this level when our timer hits zero. So that will be the way we can get game over, like I say. Obviously, there'll be other ways later on in the series, but for now, we're still focusing on time, and that is our challenge. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.